Evan, I have a quick question. Are you Team Rocket? I, uh, I would like to invoke my Fifth Amendment right uh, against oh. self-incrimination. All right, well, <laughs> let's just avoid that entirely then and uh, talk about the team matchup here as players are seated and ready to go. And just like you were alluding to before we got a chance to meet Nick Navarre, gouging fire on Jimmy's side of the field is running Dragon Dance, mm -hmm. which is that weird tech that sometimes you'd see on Roaring Moon teams that would indicate that you would want that Pokemon to be a bit more offensive, deal a bit more damage with mm -hmm. the breaking swipes. And on top of that, it has Heat Crash, yep. which is the most powerful physical fire type move, I think, in the game right now. And it also allows you to ditch your fire typing. So overall, this Gouging Fire, I think, is ready to deal some massive damage to support its Pokemon. And on top of all that, it's probably going to get a Protosynthesis boost thanks to the Torkoal. Absolutely. The Torkoal is there to give that Protosynthesis synthesis boost instead of the booster energy opting for clear amulet to avoid any kind of status drops against enemy gouging fire or intimidates but also really interesting here we have been talking about this for Rigorath and Ursaluna Blood Moon core that has been popping up on online tournaments and grassroots tournaments over the week uh, the weeks in between Portland and Charlotte and here it is as an option for Jimmy lots of players seeing that Ursaluna as an extremely powerful offensive threat and the Frigorath countering all that priority. I know. There's not going to be as much priority on Nick's side of the field as that Frigorath would want to see. However, it still does have a very good matchup into the Glamora in particular for Nick. He is running that Power Herb variant that we've seen already do well here today. In addition to that, he has a Tornadus Incarnate and a Landorus Incarnate. So a lot of times people who run Landorus Incarnate with Life Orb Sheer Force are just looking to deal that big damage very quickly. Uh, there's some really Really good type coverage here and the other thing i want to touch on real quick is the fact that the king gambit is holding the assault fest mm -hmm. item which is something that has fallen off a little bit in popularity as of late but has the access to assurance and low kick which are not moves you typically see on it anymore yeah the assault vest item allowing king gambit to have a variety of different options not just the only dark type attack sucker punch and kowtow cleave and like you mentioned this is actually running the assurance instead of kowtow cleave so king gambit now has options for steel type coverage has options for fighting type coverage which means that it has the ability to face off against enemy king Gambit pretty well. Um, also, of course, we have to shout out the Scream Tail. We last saw Anton Galkin in Portland doing a lot of work with this disruptive Scream Tail with the Encore, with the Disable combo there. Of course, that booster energy there to boost the speed of that Pokemon to make sure that it is the fastest thing on the field and gets that Disable or Encore off as it needs to. Yeah, I did misspeak speak earlier. I do want to correct myself real quick. Heat Crash actually does damage based off of the relative weights of the Pokemon, uh, but still, that is a very powerful fire type attack, especially mm -hmm. if you are throwing it into a lighter Pokemon like, let's say, the Screamtail. <laughs> the, the one thing that I do want to think about as we go into team preview and sort of look at how this matchup is going to work out in game number one is that Jimmy's team has a very apparent sun mode mm -hmm. with it. You can lead the Fluttermane and the Torkoal particularly next to each other. You could lead Torkoal Gouging Fire if you want to really go into that uh, fire type damage is the start, or you can just go something completely opposite and do like Fluttermane for Igarath for Trick Room. Mm -hmm. I, I do think Jimmy has to be really uh, intentional about how he plays Sun into this matchup, especially given that the Screamtail on the opposing side of the field would certainly benefit from having that Protosynthesis activate maybe more than once in the matchup. Uh, but still, I, I do think that he has a lot of damage that he can threaten, whereas I feel like Nick has to play a bit more responsive, if only because it feels like he's going to have to search for you know, the matchup that he he wants in this. I, I don't think he's going to be able to pick a lead and mm -hmm. just say confidently, these two Pokemon will be able to handle what I think Jimmy's going to throw out. Yeah, I think it's going to be really interesting to see. You know, whenever I see a, a team that has a pretty obvious trick room mode, the first thing as I, I do is I look at the team sheet and see, is there taunt anywhere on this team? What is the way to stop trick room from going up? There is no taunt on Nick's side. Uh, so the only option for getting trick room off the field is going to be to delete that Ferrigarath before it can set trick room. And with the support of Follow Me Ogre Pond, that's actually going to be really difficult, if not impossible, for Nick to pull off. 
He'll just have to worry about you know stalling out those trick room terms, turns, and that's where King Gambit with the Assault Vest could do pretty decently, but both Torkoal and Blood Moon Ursa Luna are going to have a decent matchup into that. Yeah, and I think because of that, we actually see the King Gambit as a lead for Nick alongside of that Glamora, but like you just called, Evan, that Ogre Pond and the Ferrigarath out on the field for Jimmy. So if he so chooses, follow me in Trick Room is almost guaranteed to be successful here. The other thing that I find interesting about that option for Jimmy is that the King Gambit's only dark type attack that is guaranteed to attack would be Assurance at this point in time. And it has a very weak base power unless it gets hit by an attack first. And I mm -hmm. don't think Jimmy has to throw damage into that spot to open up this game. Yeah, I don't think Jimmy is going to be trying to do any damage at all on this first turn, just trying to get the positioning for the sweepers in the back. And here's where it gets kind of tricky because having that King Gambit out right now feels pretty good into Trick Room, but if that Ogre Pond goes down, then Jimmy is able to bring in one of his own sweepers. So Nick actually retreating the Glamora, saving that Pokemon for later and swapping in his own Ogre Pond to add follow me pressure to wasting some Trick Room turns as Nick is able to get a little bit of damage off onto the enemy Ogre Pond, uh, but the Trick Room goes up, but again, no huge sweeper on the field right now. Jimmy is going to have to reposition. I think that Jimmy was honestly hoping that the Ogre Pond would have been taken out there. I mean, if you look at his back line with the Torkoal and the Gouging mm -hmm. Fire, getting one of those Pokemon in essentially for free in between turns would have been way more beneficial because he could have just gone straight for an Eruption plus an Expanding Force or the Hyper Voice from the Ferrigarath on his side of the field should have been more than enough to secure a double knockout. Mm -hmm. Instead, forced to awkwardly play through his first turn of Trick Room here, which does open things up for Nick. Certainly, he could try and go for a follow me here if he's worried about the Ivy Cudgel's target. But I think that you don't necessarily worry about that. You're still at full health. You can go for some big damage onto the opposing side of the field if you feel comfortable with that. Yet yeah, now is the time for stalling turns of Trick Room as Nick actually just going to protect with the Ogre Pond while Jimmy is going for the patented follow me plus switch turn here, which means that another turn of Trick Room has been wasted. However, Torkoal is now out on the field, which does not care about the follow me from Ogre Pond, has access to Eruption, which would do big damage, and the Ogre Pond on Jimmy's side can protect from the Sucker Punch by using that follow me. So Jimmy had to take an extra turn to get there, but has ended up in a position where he has a sweeper on the field. And knowing that Nick's only water type Pokemon is out on the field right now, and it's a neutral matchup into Ogre Pond thanks to its dual typing, means that Jimmy, if he wants to do even more damage this turn, he can go for a follow me to block any sucker punches, and then you terrestrialize into that fire type, and then you have a terrifier sun boosted, charcoal boosted, full health eruption. There is not a lot of Pokemon that can take that in this metagame right now. Yeah, you were cold a little bit earlier, Gabby. <laughs> I think things are about to heat up on the field as the chandel Chandelabra shows up on top of the Torkoal as a terrestrialization coming out on the Nick's side as well, getting the special defense boost plus adding the resistance to this eruption for his own Ogre Pond. Of course, King Gambit with the Assault Vest item does not have access to Protect, so is going to have to take this eruption as Jimmy's Follow Me on his own Ogre Pond is going to prevent this Sucker Punch from Nick. So this is just going to be a full power eruption into both the King Gambit and the Ogre Pond. That's going to be connecting. That's full health. That's a one hit KO on an Assault Vest King Gambit and almost 50% damage to the Ogre Pond as well, even after the boost and after the terrestrialization. But it will trade with the Power Whip into Jimmy's Ogre Pond. Yeah, a very smart terrestrialization there from Nick being able to avoid a majority of the eruption damage and also falling just shy of a two-hit knockout from an eruption. So now that there are no more priority moves left 
for Nick in the matchup as we know it right now. That does mean that this Torkoal will be guaranteed another eruption before either of Nick's Pokemon can attack. Mm -hmm. And seeing how that damage played out does mean that if Jimmy wants to guarantee the KO on the Ogre Pond this turn, you either have to do some additional damage with the Farigarath via an attack, mm -hmm. or you go for Helping Hand and hope that that's going to be enough. I think the bigger threat right now, honestly, is going to be that Glamora mm -hmm. instead of the Ogre Pond because a Meteor Beam right now would be very, very strong into that Torkoal. And uh, it could possibly take a Eruption if it's not Helping Hand boosted. But then you have to worry about this Farigarath with Expanding Force. There is so much going in Jimmy's favor right now. Chuppa still has to play very defensively until the Twisted Dimensions turn return to normal. And with a Helping Hand Eruption coming your way, I'm not sure you can necessarily power through that. Well, the only way to do that is a spiky shield, so Nyx Glamora will protect itself from this eruption and a double spiky shield from the Ogre Pond. That means that we are now headed into our final turn of Trick Room. Nick has done a great job of trying to stall out these twisted dimensions. One more turn for Jimmy to make something happen because, you know, if these Pokemon, both Glamora and Ogre Pond, make it through out of Trick Room. Nick will be in extremely strong position, still has an unrevealed fourth Pokemon. We know that Jimmy has Gouging Fire in the back, which means that Glamora is pretty well positioned at this point. So uh, Jimmy's going to have to make something happen here. Yeah, and I do like how Jimmy is thinking about this turn in particular because, again, Glamora is that Pokemon to beat right now. Mm -hmm. And last turn, we saw him try and power through the Glamora with the Helping Hand combination. I think this time around, we saw him walk into a damage-dealing attack against that Glamora in particular. Nick is not guaranteed a double Whoa. spiky shield, and he doesn't get it, which means this Glamora is now in huge danger. But he got the double on the Ogre Pond. Got the double on the Ogre Pond, but didn't get the double on the Glamora, so this eruption will connect with Glamora. Uh, that's going to deal good damage, but it will be resisted damage from this eruption coming out from the Torkoal. Oh my goodness. Wow, that helping hand would have actually picked up the KO onto Glamora. Even with all of that, that's huge damage and the expanding force cleaning up there. Of course, now Nick will have the speed advantage for this turn as the Twisted Dimensions have returned to normal. But it's going to be Ogre Pond and now Landorus, the final options for Nick. Going to have to make something happen. And these are two heavy hitters. They are heavy hitters, but can they do enough damage in a single turn to potentially knock out the Ferrigarath? knowing that Sun is still active on the field right now. This Farigarath could always just click Trick Room mm -hmm. because you know that Gouging Fire, more likely than not, is going to be slower than the Ogre Pond and the Landorus, assuming they are trained at full speed like they typically are. And if you're worried about the Torkoal making it through this turn, you can always make a switch. Or I've seen some trainers as well just walk into a eruption in this position regardless, hoping to catch your opponent off guard by a double target. Well, Torkoal is going to retreat in favor of the Gouging Fire in the back. Gouging Fire now out on the field, getting a Protosynthesis boost. That is going to boost the speed of that Pokemon. Ogre Pond's going to focus down the Farigarath, that Power Whip dealing over 50%, activating the Citrus Berry. So Farigarath is going to go ahead and restore some of its health with that Citrus Berry and an Earth Power targeting it down as well. That'll do Both it. Both the Power Whip and the Earth Power able to pick up the KO on the Farigarath. So no chance for Trick Room there. Jimmy is going to have to win with the Torkoal and the Gouging Fire. And in perfect timing, Sun has faded just for Torkoal to come back out on the field. Yeah, that switch there did mean that there was no damage from Jimmy, but seeing how the sunlight interactions are playing out, it is so important for that gouging fire that Protosynthesis is activated so that it has the speed advantage mm -hmm. here. He did not need Trick Room as his win condition in this situation. He just needs that speed boost. Still in a tough spot when you consider the Landorus is can deal some significant damage here and Ogre Pond still available to protect its partner as well. Yeah, Ogre Pond able to tank this heat crash with the follow me and Landorus has the Sand Seer Storm oh. hits both double one and KO. That is the power of Landorus incarnate form. Nick hitting both of those Sand Seer sand Storms, knocking out both of Jimmy's Pokemon. That is it for game one, and Landorus 
Just uh, actually, again, the Ogre Pond, it was that follow me, the one follow me that mattered. And then picking up that double Oko. Yeah, it's tough to say whether or not the Heat Crash would have picked up the knockout on the Landorus. I want to say that with the help of the Sunlight in particular, it probably would have. Mm -hmm. But still, seeing that Sandseer Storm connect with both Pokemon and just knock them out outright goes to show why Landorus Incarnate is so good right now in this metagame. I don't necessarily think that Jimmy had the right Pokemon available to him in that scenario to stop the Sandseer Storm. Your win condition really was just hoping that their, uh, that attack would not connect with both Pokemon, but mm -hmm. that's just how the game goes. Yeah, and that was, uh, you know, Jimmy is looking at potential Trick Room Sweepers. You have the Torkoal, and so the Torkoal Gouging Fire mode, you I see where Jimmy was coming from, right? You wanted to have the first trick room up so that Torkoal could fire off some eruptions, get some good damage, and maybe if Jimmy had had that one extra turn of trick room, yeah. he could have made it happen. But because Nick was stalling it out until you know the trick room subsided and then it was just, you know, Jimmy ha had hoped for the post trick room sweeper of the gouging fire in the back, Unfortunately, that Ogre Pond was still up to redirect that attack, and both of those Pokemon are weak to Sandseer Storm, and if Landorus is landing those Sandseer Storms, your Fire-type Pokemon are going down. Yeah, it, it was a really smart play from Nick saving that Landorus for the end. Going into game number two, honestly, I don't see why you wouldn't keep that as your end game uh, regardless. It does have access to protect, so worst case scenario, you could stall through a turn or two of Trick Room uh, with that Landorus itself, but it's just a, a lot easier to stall, I think, with the King Gambit with the Assault Vest, as Jimmy really has to bring that Torkoal in order mm -hmm. to check that Pokemon in particular. You know, the Ogre Pawn alternating between Follow Me and Spiky Shield, and then also giving itself the special defense and really typing boost with committing to that uh, water type terrestrialization just was so important for Nick's strategy. And, you know, even looking at a possible adjustments, if Jimmy does decide to leave the gouging fire behind, Ursaluna is still going to struggle with the Ogre Pawn and the King Gambit on the opposing side of the field. So I, I don't think there's necessarily a straightforward answer here for Jimmy. I love how he was able to use the Torkoal to put so much damage potential, so much damage pressure on the field but Nick just showcased that he's very comfortable playing that slow piece of game. Yeah, and I think it's, I, I totally agree with you. It's really hard to see what kind of adjustments Jimmy could make here. And I think it really comes down to that lead that Nick chose. Having the Glamora and the King Gambit lead puts so much pressure on your potential trick room mode. You kind of have to lock in to follow me or else you're risking yeah. your Ferrigraph going down and then that entire mode is gone. But at the same time, you know, Nick showed that he is going to be able to play really heads up, going to be able to stall that out, and just the the discipline not to try to pick up that KO on turn one and instead let Jimmy have to maneuver around, have to waste valuable trick room turns on switching to get sweepers in play. Even though that Torkoal came in at full health, even though it was able to launch off sun boosted, terrestrialization boosted, charcoal boosted eruptions, just was not fast enough to get the damage down that Jimmy needed in that game one. And it's really hard to see how you get that, how you get there faster in game two without making a hard read. Yeah, and I think this also goes to show just Nick's experience playing competitive Pokemon. I think when you start out playing and you face off against a Trick Room team, you think that I need to have a specific answer for Trick Room. I need a taunt or maybe my own Trick Room user or Trick Room in prison, uh, whatever it may be, you need that defined answer. Mm -hmm. But realistically speaking, if you have enough bulk and you have enough access to protect and or spiky shield and or I guess burning bulwark, but <laughs> uh, it, in order to get you through those five turns, you don't necessarily have to have a scripted answer. And I think Nick is probably going to rely on that same strategy going into this game number two. Well, here we are in game two and Nick is actually going to adjust quite a bit here, going for the Tornadus and Landorus lead up against the Ogre Pond and Ferrigoraph. So Jimmy has opted to stick with the Ogre Pond and Ferrigoraph lead, which we have seen a follow me can help guarantee a trick room here. Although Nick does have two spread attacks here, has the ability to go for Bleak Wind Storm and Sandseer Storm. Likely not going to pick up the KO on Ferrigoraph, depends on how it's been trained, but 
uh, a huge, a huge shakeup from Nick here. I know, and just making assumptions here, you know, assuming that if Jimmy led the same two Pokemon, he probably has at least that Torkoal in the back. I feel like rather than set up Trick Room this turn, or at least guarantee Follow Me Trick Room, I think you have to go for the KO onto the Landorus to ensure that the Torkoal just has everything in its favor as we go into uh, the first couple of turns of Trick Room. But look at how much that wow. Bleak Storm does. That Bleak Wind Storm did so much damage to Ogre Pond. No follow me here. Oh. So the Farigarap actually hanging on after the Sand Seer Storm. Ogre Pond also hanging on after the Bleak Wind and the Sand Steer. Both of the storms have gone through, and Jimmy has weathered those storms to fire back with an Ivy Cudgel and pick up a one hit KO as he sets Trick Room. That is a massive difference over game one. That's a massive difference, and that was all just the natural bulk of these Pokemon. You know, both those attacks did as much damage as they could, and it still was not enough to get a knockout on either Pokemon. So that is great information for Jimmy in this overall set. He does have Trick Room up now, and we did see that his own Ogre Pond is a lot slower than the Pokemon on the opposing side of the field. I can't help but wonder if that maybe foreshadows how it's been trained. Maybe it is on the slower side of things, knowing that he favors Trick Room as a mode. Mm -hmm. That could mean that a Horn Leech here into the opposing Ogre Pond would be a great opportunity to heal up some of that health. He could also go on the offense with the Ferrigarath, but realistically speaking, I don't think either of these Pokemon are equipped to get another one-hit knockout here. I think you just have to hope that Nick knocks out something so you can get Torpo on the field next turn. Yeah, Jimmy is still in that awkward position, like you mentioned, of having to basically support Pokemon out on the field, Ferrigarath and the Ogre Pond. Just gonna try to deal some damage and get a sweeper out on the field as Tornadus showing off the protect here. Tornadus protects itself, Ogre Pond also protecting itself with the spiky shield, while Nick is also oh, going to protect okay. with the spiky shield as well. So this is a completely wasted trick room turn and not even repositioning, it's still just for Rigorath and Ogre Pond out on the field. I find it very interesting that we see the protect on the Tornadus here from Nick, as that is a move that has really fallen out of favor for trainers on Tornadus in particular. So, you know, yes, this was open team sheet. Yes, you know, both trainers were aware of that fact going into this match, but it really would have paid off very nicely if we saw a double attack there from the Ogre Pond and the Furigarath from Jimmy. I, I think that the fact that everybody sort of took a step uh -huh. back that previous turn does mean that Nick has to be a bit more careful this upcoming turn, mm -hmm. but Jimmy still has his two defensive Pokemon on the field. The only thing that's changed is there's one less turn of Trick Room now for Nick to try and power his way through. Yeah, there's one less turn of Trick Room. There is also now a much freer offensive option into that Ogre Pond Wellspring on the opposite side. Hyper Voice going to deal a little bit of chip damage onto both, and Horn Leech actually picking up a good amount of damage back onto the Ogre Pond while healing up a little bit of health as well. This Bleak Wind Storm, though, from the Tornadus connects on both Pokemon. Nick is hitting all of the storms, knocks out the Ogre Pond. This Varigraph likely extremely close behind as this Power Whip lands as well. So both Pokemon now off the field. That means that Jimmy is down to his final two Pokemon with a couple of turns of Trick Room left. So that is going to be Torkoal and Gouging Fire. We have already seen this Gouging Fire is Speed Booster from the Protosynthesis, which means it's going to be the fastest, aka slowest thing on the field, at least until these dimensions reverse. The nice thing, though, is that there is enough chip damage down on both the Tornadus and the Ogre Pond to ensure a knockout here if the Torkoal opts to go for Eruption, especially if the Torkoal opts to Terrastalize as well. I think the only thing that Nick has to be careful about is just his sequencing into the final turns here. If he double protects, Next turn, the Torkoal will have one final turn to go for that eruption. Yep. And then he will have one Pokemon against Jimmy's too. If he tries to protect one thing but not the other, it could get a little bit weird. I, I feel like his best option here might honestly be to just let these uh, go double protect this turn. Next turn, let the two Pokemon get knocked out. 
and then just hope that whatever your last Pokemon is, maybe if it's that Glamora, you can then deal enough damage to the Gouging Fire fast enough for a KO. Maybe, but then you still have to deal with the Torkoal, and yeah. I love what I am seeing from Jimmy here. Using the threat of this Terra Fire eruption with the Charcoal, that will pick up KOs on both Pokemon on the field. So. Jimmy knows that Gouging Fire is just going to have free turns if Nick protects, or Gouging Fire will have free turns if Nick doesn't protect. Nick will go for the Tailwind this turn to try and get a speed advantage after Trick Room expires as Torkoal fires off the eruption. But we already saw Jimmy locked into Dragon Dance on Gouging Fire, so Jimmy is already thinking about the post-Trick Room world and setting up this Gouging Fire for big damage and to negate the power of that Tailwind. He's also playing a bit more predictively. This was actually something I just jotted down for myself in between matches. You know, Nick has been very consistent with protect attack, protect attack going through Trick Room. And if you have a Pokemon like Gouging Fire that can use a move, Dragon Dance, Swords Dance, what have you, to boost your own damage on those passive turns, you can really catch your opponent by surprise. Now that it is the final turn of Trick Room, I think this Gouging Fire with the Protosynthesis boost, in, as well as that Dragon Dance boost, should be the fastest thing on the field when the dimensions turn back to normal. So it's really just how much damage do you need to get down onto this Glamora to ensure that you can knock it out before something like Meteor Beam takes you out instead. Yeah, I, I, yeah. I see it. <laughs> I see it here. I see the play. You see the play. <laughs> All right. Tell me, Evan, what's your future site? What's the play? <laughs> I mean, the, this Glamora, if, if Glamora is able to get off a Meteor Beam into that, that gouging fire, then it will be able to pick up the KO on the Torkoal in turn two. Ogrepan goes for the spiky shield here, does not get it. Torkoal just goes for Eruption, will connect onto both of them, but that big damage, we already saw how much damage it could do to Glamora, not enough for a one-hit KO. With this Gouging Fire, with the Protosynthesis boost, with the Dragon Dance, it's slower, AKA, or faster, aka slower, the Meteor Beam gets off from the Glamora, it goes off, it will get the special attack boost, Glamora. Raising a special attack, consuming the power herb. Here we Firing go. the meteor beam, hits the gouging fire. That's oh. a one hit KO. Gouging fire is down. Trick room is down. Glamora at plus one threatens a huge earth power into this Torkoal. It could be possible for this Torkoal to take a single Earth Power for Glamora without that special attack boost. But with that special attack boost in play, I don't think there's a way that this Torkoal could necessarily guarantee its survival. I do think that going for a accurate Ooh. attack is the way to play it here. But Torkoal just doesn't have the opportunity with another one hit knockout to win the game for Nick Navarre. Oh, that Glamora. 